Thank you for your presence here today. This is the Rules Confirmation and Public Elections Committee, and we appreciate your presence. Today is May the 15th. It is, of course, Tuesday, and I detect a quorum, so we're going to get started. But prior to us getting started, our former chair has an explanation for us. All right. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, it is my understanding mm -hmm. that um, the um, uh, the basic documentation that applicants fill out mm -hmm. um, didn't get sent to us in time, okay? Mm -hmm. It was in the clerk's office, and I'm looking for the clerk who is not in here, right. but it, it was in the clerk's office in it time. In it was time. appropriately in time, mm -hmm. but our own offices made an error and just didn't get it to us in time. Now, this has happened a couple of times before Mr. Jameson's in the back. Mm -hmm. Typically, um, when, um, when our own offices make an error with nobody else was uh, at fault, mm -hmm. then we just sort of understand it and go forward. But I think there was a question about whether we needed to suspend rules. There's a rule that says that we have to get it within a certain, uh, like five days in advance of mm -hmm. the committee meeting. In this case, we didn't get it through no fault of anybody in this room, uh, none of the applicants, but we got it late in accordance with our rule, but it was our own mistake. So the question is, do we need to do anything? Is it okay if we just say it on the record? I mean, again, nobody did anything wrong except our offices just made a mistake right. and didn't get it to us in time. So I'm looking at Mr. Jamison. Right. I mean, uh, I know that Councilman Rosenberg may have had a yes. question about it. Yeah. Do we need to suspend the rules or can we just say, you know what? We made We're a good. mistake. We're good. It, it's truthfully been handled both ways. The, the rule is there. It's Rule 41. It yeah. says you are to get it five days in advance, and it doesn't care uh, whose fault it is or not. Uh, usually the code word here is that there was an administrative error, there's a suspension, and we carry on. But um, it's the will of the committee. Okay. Well, does anybody have any objections to us? Suspending on? the okay. rule. Uh -huh. Under the circumstances, yes. Right. Just suspend the rules. The rules allow. We yeah, don't I, need to do it out there, too, though. Yeah, I mean, I personally would be okay with saying the applicants did what they needed to do, to do and mm -hmm. were good and not suspend the rules, and we made an executive decision to just okay. carry on. Okay, I'm the chair, and I make the executive decision to carry on. Does anybody have any objections? No? Okay, well, we'll just carry on. Good. Well, thank you for that. We'll just carry on, and thank you for having everything in expeditiously. Well, we will start with the um, elections and confirmations. We'll start with the Historical Commission, the appointment of Mr. Thomas Wood. If you will come forward for a term expiring August the 1st, 2019, Mr. Wood will fill the unexpired term of Mr. Richard Courtney. And after which, we're going to ask for uh, the Human Relations Commission uh, people to come forth. I will start with the reappointments. It will be four of them, if we could have four chairs at that appropriate time, and then we'll st uh, go from there to the appointments. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thomas Woods, for being here. I'd like to know if you're a resident of Davidson County. I am. If you're a Metro voter. voter. Yes. Okay. Do you serve on any other boards or commissions? Not Metro. Not Metro. Thank you. That's what I'm referring to as Metro. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we have a few questions for you. Sure. Uh, I'm an Asheville native. Um, I uh, spent about 25 years in journalism with uh, the Central Tennessean and uh, uh, the Scene and Nashville Post City Paper, uh, and uh, have written uh, many articles and a couple of books dealing with Nashville history. Uh, and I'm uh, just kind of a history geek. Um, uh, delighted to uh, have this opportunity um, and uh, happy to answer any questions. Okay, at this time we call for questions from the committee members. We have one. Council A, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. I understand you wrote a wonderful book about Nashville. Could you please brag about this a little bit good about this book? So we will know how great and suited for this position you will be. Okay. Well, I, uh, I was co-editor with the late John Edgerton of uh, a book that came out in 2001 uh, called Nashville, an American Self-Portrait. And we wrangled about 50 authors and about as many photographers to document the, the 
year 2000 in Nashville, but to use that as a taking off point for uh, an examination of wealth and power in Nashville, religion, and, uh, race relations, and thematic chapters about these things. Uh, and we had contributors like Lamar Alexander, and uh, we had the last published writing ever of Fred Russell, great sports writer, uh, and um, uh, Bruce Feiler, the uh, uh, religion author, was part of it, uh, Roy Blunt Jr., many other people. So that was a lot of fun, um, and uh, that came out in 2001. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? I think that was enough right there. I think so, too. Can I get a motion? So so move. Move. So okay. Okay. Anybody second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? The ayes have it. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Make sure you get out of the parking garage. Yes, appreciate it. That's so funny. That's what we get. At this time, uh, the Human Relations Commission appointees, if we could get a couple of more chairs up here, and we're going to take the reappointments of Ms. Shamar Ali, uh, Ms. Marcella Gomez, Ms. Dr. Oscar Miller, and Dr. Janice Rodriguez. If you all could come forward and... Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, we'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah, we'll figure it out. That's right. Wait a minute. One of our council members is choking to death. <laughs> yeah. I'm good now. I'm okay. Okay. I'll survive. <laughs> <laughs> Such camaraderie. If you two would just move around just a little bit, just move around. You move to that end. And then okay. if you all would close in. I'm a retired teacher. teacher. I know how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you already know. That was very nicely done. <laughs> if you've done it for 30 years, you would know how to do this. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for cooperating. I'll ask each of you, are you uh, residents of Davidson County? Yes. yes. Each one of you registered voters. Yes. yes. Do you serve on any other metro boards or commissions? No. No? Okay. In unison. <laughs> okay. Um, at this time, if each one of you would briefly tell us a little bit about yourself, then we'll start right here. Thank you. Um, I've lived in Nashville for 24 years. Uh, I am originally from Bogota, Colombia. I uh, became a U.S. citizen in 1997 here in Nashville. This is where I grew, you know, my, I raised my son, and then he moved to New York. Um, I've been involved in community and civic work for about 16 years. Mm -hmm. I serve as president of the Tennessee Latin American Chamber of Commerce. I've served on the commission of the municipal auditorium, and just very, very pleasant work, uh, you know, to be with Mel in the Human Relations Commission, it does a lot of good for our community. So I'm excited to be reappointed to it. Very impressive. Next. <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Summer Ali. I'm actually a native of Humphreys County, Waverly, Tennessee. My first time living in Nashville was when I was a Vanderbilt student and then went on to law school, left for several years and then returned in 2012 where I started working in um, Governor Haslam's administration with the Department of Community, Economic and Community Development. I'm currently a lawyer at Bass Ferry and Sims. Uh, my practice is at the intersection of national security law and human rights law. Um, and my father's Palestinian, my mother's Syrian, so I'm born to immigrants, although I was born in this country. I'm Muslim American, and just in terms of just some of the boards that I serve on, I'm um, on the Vanderbilt Law School board. I'm also on Vanderbilt's um, Doors of Distinction with the Chancellor and a young global leader with the World Economic Forum and also a term member with the Council on Foreign Relations and a member of the Truman National Security Project and um, also on the board of Winrock International. Okay, we're impressed, okay? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, have to follow the I, I know. I mean, this we, is ridiculous. We, I, I know. <laughs> I know. It was I, I know. We always are getting over Next. <laughs> Next. Hello. Um, I'm Oscar Miller. I, I teach sociology at Tennessee State University. I've been there for about 23 years. Uh, since that time, I've been working in a community at the government agencies and nonprofit organizations, helping them evaluate how well they do what they do. And uh, that's pretty much my work, my role at the commission, and I'm happy doing it. I love doing it. And Dr. Oscar Miller, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Next. I'm Dr. Janice Rodriguez, and um, you're a power. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I'm a native Nashvilleian, although I uh, moved to Washington, D.C. After, after attending the University of Tennessee and worked for Voice of America um, in a Radio Marti broadcast uh, to Cuba. Uh, returned to Tennessee in uh, 1998 and began working at Tennessee Foreign Language Institute, where I've been since then. I'm executive director there. Um, and uh, I'm also adjunct faculty at Tennessee State University. And I have my PhD is in public administration. Mm -hmm. I serve on the Tennessee State Supreme Court's Access to Justice uh, Commission uh, for language issues, uh, addressing addressing the state. And uh, let's see, I guess that I have two kids and live in uh, Troll South area. So. <laughs> well, thank you, Colby Slate. Okay, questions? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, because all of you are reappointed, mm -hmm. and so if you would share us, you know, in the past experience as a board, you know, what you most enjoyed and what you see as a challenge for Nashville is, yeah. you know, each of you in a short sentence, yeah. that'd be great. Uh, for me specifically, it has been the work that we've done in research on affordable housing and looking at exactly what's going on and how much that affects the immigrant community. Um, I've actually really enjoyed the leadership of our executive director, um, Melody Fowler-Green. I think she's doing a terrific job, and I think that the dialogue that we have um, as a board has been, uh, as a commission, has been very helpful, and I've learned a lot about what's been going on around town. The thing that I'm the most concerned about right now is Nashville's readiness um, to become a majority-minority major, city. Um, that, that keeps me up at night, especially as um, um, the human rights conflict resolution part of my uh, part of my life. I'm worried about it. Uh, I think one of the things I like best is the uh, mobile diversity seminar, um, and just generally working and finding out, learning more about the city, and seeing where I could pitch in to help a little bit more. <laughs> I think um, I really enjoyed being part of the real dialogue that <coughs> took place uh, uh, summer before last, uh, and uh, I have really appreciated the level of research and uh, uh, true investigation that the, that the uh, the commission staff has taken on. Um, I think that's been very beneficial. Look forward to seeing more of that. Thank you. I like to recognize Councilman Schulman. You know, I've just looked over all of these resumes. Makes me feel bad about no, what I feel I've like. You haven't done anything. <laughs> you haven't done anything in our lifetime. I'm, okay. I'm almost embarrassed. So okay. um, I move that. Gives you some I move that we approve all these four and okay. get them out of here. <laughs> is that a motion? It is a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposers? No. Thank you. Aye. Aye. Willing, being willing to serve. Thank the highest habit. And take your impressive. resumes with you. <laughs> <laughs> we want to grow up to be Thank just you. like you. Oh, Thank you. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Put our chairs back where you found them. No. <laughs> no, no. We have four others coming up. Okay. These are the appointments. <laughs> okay. Okay. We have uh, Kobe <laughs> Petraeus. Petorius. 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 Then we have Reverend Davy Tucker. Then we have Miss Linda Robinson. Then we have Mr. Erin. Erwin. That's close enough. No, I don't want to be close enough. I want to hit that mark. Erwin Benick. Erin Bennett. Erin Bennett. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, at this time, are you all residents of Davidson County? Yes. Yes. You registered voters in Davidson County? Yes. yes. Do you serve on any of the boards or commissions in Metro? No. No. no? Okay. Well, could we start right here with this pretty lady? If you would tell us a few things about yourself. Thank you. My name is Linda Robinson. Um, I've been in Nashville for about 20 years. Um, raised my son here. who went to uh, Metro Nashville Public Schools and graduated from there. <clears throat> um, I belong to Lee Chapel AME Church. Um, I have been involved in social justice work for as long as I can remember, particularly as I've been here. Currently, I am co-chair of Noah's Criminal Justice 
and Mass Incarceration Task Force is the work that I'm doing now. Um, we're involved in many, many issues all over the city uh, because there's many things that, we, much work, and many things that we need to do to make sure that uh, we keep the kids off the school to prison pipeline and in school. Thank you so much. Next. My name is Erwin Benick. I moved to Nashville in 1971 to attend law school. When I was in law school, I did health care organizing in East Tennessee and Fayette County, West Tennessee. Practiced as a lawyer for, still practicing as a lawyer, but during my practice, uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to successfully argue a sexual harassment case in the United States Supreme Court. Uh, I have been involved in, primarily in the Jewish community. I was head of the Jewish uh, Community Relations Committee, worked with a group of Jews and Muslims to create a dialogue on Jewish-Muslim relations, and then we formed an organization called Family of Abraham, uh, which has had a number of uh, citywide uh, forums to talk about you know, how to integrate Muslims into the greater Nashville community. Well, thank you for your service. Uh, Reverend Davey Tucker. Uh, you put the emphasis on that, first of all. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm born and raised here in Nashville. Uh, so for 10 years, I spent in the U.S. Marine Corps, worked for the Sheriff's Department, uh, was jail administrator there, uh, been involved in criminal justice reform, also uh, been a social justice advocate like my sister here, all my life from uh, stopping guys from taking folks' lunch money in the bathroom. So it started a long time ago. Uh, Pastor Beach Creek Baptist Church over on the north end of town. I'm on staff at American Baptist College. I also uh, have a nonprofit called the Center for Imagination, the only male <coughs> school program that I know of in the city. Um, part of uh, IMF, uh, just interested in improving human relations in all aspects, whether it's racial, social, political, ways to make us better together. Thank you. Let me get this name right. Victorious. Uh, Victorious, yes. And, it, and the worst is, so my first name is Quibi, but it's spelled Kobe. So it's Quibi Pretorius. Yes. Okay. Tell us a few things. Our story in Nashville began in 1996 when we moved here. Uh, my husband came to Vanderbilt, and I found myself as part as of a group of about 30 South Africans who were here at the time. Who and uh, what? Ha well, yeah. And then what happened was the group of people started coming and it grew, and we got a little bit more organized, and all of it fell in my lap. So for the past. 20 years, I've been organizing all of the social events of Friends of South Africa is our group, which then led, one thing led to another because what happens is somebody's mother comes to visit, she breaks her foot, she doesn't have insurance, and people call me, and I didn't have the answers. Where do you go if you're not here and I don't have insurance? Or people would say, what's a charter school? Or what's a metro? Or if they just had questions that I couldn't answer. So, uh, Mayor Colvin then eventually started the My City Academy, and I couldn't wait to get involved in that, and it was one of the best things I ever did, because now when people come with questions, I can actually steer them. I don't have the answers, but I can steer them in the right direction. And after, oh, and then what, what I realized was we're all the South Africans here, and we not only do we enjoy getting together, every now and then through the year, but we also started enjoying giving back to the community. So we got ourselves into the dragon boat races, and we would row on the river, and after that, we're like, okay, let's adopt a stream. So we adopted a stream at Richmond Creek, and we get together a couple times a year, and we clean the stream, and so we, we tried to find a little balance between our own little community that we get together sometimes and then also giving back. But, and so that's the story. And then the last couple of years I was on the um, Immigrant Library Advisory Board, which I really enjoyed, and I just rolled off of that. So what would be the name of your book? <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know, but what I have to, the story I have to tell is the last time I was here was because we, I had a flock of illegal chickens in West Mead, <laughs> and we were here, and we, they passed it, I don't know if anybody can remember, by one vote that legalized our chickens in 2010, <laughs> so that was... So you tell me it's going to be legalized chickens. <laughs> it already is. Yes, okay. yes. <laughs> yes we are, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, questions from the committee members? Sure. Wow. <laughs> so since all of you are new appoint appointees, right. so if you have any uh, personal goal as a commissioner you want to achieve on this term, or you know something in specific you would like to share with us? In well, part of my background as well is um, training and development. So I'm particularly interested in that training and education piece. Um, uh, of the job, so I would can't wait to actually get involved in actually, perhaps putting together and delivering some some training and education courses. Awesome. I spent a lot of my time recently bridging differences between people, and that's really where I want to see a lot of emphasis go. Awesome. I think that the commission has done a lot of great work, and I hope to be part of uh, that. Uh, my biggest concern is. There's often more political will than there is goodwill, mm. and the hope to be able to affect the change towards some goodwill in spite of political will. Well, I've been sitting here listening to all the incredible people on this commission, so mostly I just want to learn, and then hopefully what we learn and the solutions that commission comes up with, we can spread it around in our communities where we go back to. Okay. Anyone else? Great. You move to approve? Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Well, Councilman, do you have a question? Second. Okay. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Any opposers? No, the, I, I have two constituents here, so I'm yeah, going to make that motion. <laughs> I have one, the one follow-up question after okay. we've done all this. When do you all meet? I'm looking at Mel. When do you all meet? We meet on the first Monday of every month at 4 o'clock. All right, I'm going to show up. Yeah. yeah. Because I would really enjoy to have you Thank in the room. Yeah. We have some really deep and interesting conversations. Um, too. I mean, based upon There's the folks that are it. here, you have a, whether you did it or whether it came out of the mirror yeah. or whether Patrick did it, whatever it did, You've assembled a tremendous group of people. Very and impressive. And I think, uh, yeah. I think we'd, I'd like to come and yeah. see what's going well, on. Well, I've been really honored by the caliber um, of the, the folks in the room. Um, and also just really honored that there are a lot of people that have watched what our commission has done over the last couple years and really they have significant interest in serving in that way. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. You've been a and next we'll move on to the sexually oriented business licensing board, the SOBLB board, and that's with Miss I'm gonna get this name right, Quante Tunes. Is that did I get it right? All right, good job. Oh, Thank I you. That. <laughs> because when I saw it on here, you were gonna be Keanu. Quante. Yeah, that's the first. Yeah, that's, but then, okay, Quante. Okay, are you a resident of Davidson County? Yes. You're a voter here in Davidson County? Yes. Do you serve on any other metro boards or commissions? No. Okay, could you talk about yourself? Okay. Uh, I have been in Nashville for about 20 years, came here for college in the fall of 97, and I'm a Vanderbilt undergrad, stayed for law school. I'm a practicing attorney for the state. Um, I actually advise a team of attorneys that advises about 11 different uh, state boards and committees. I'm a mom, a uh, wife. Uh, I'm also very active in the community. I sit on several boards for uh, different bar associations as well as on the boards of a couple of nonprofits that I started with some friends. Okay, and Ms. Toombs will fill the unexpired term of Ms. Mrs. Megan Greer. Okay, do we have any questions by our committee members? Okay, Councilman. Thank you for agreeing to serve. Um, I know this board has had a lot of problems achieving a quorum and has 
therefore had to can cancel a lot of their meetings. Are you comfortable that your schedule is going to allow you to attend the meetings at the times and dates they're set? I am. I work in Metro Center, so it wouldn't be a problem for me to just pop downtown. I'd most likely have to go back to work, but I can come for the meetings. Awesome. Thank you. Council Lady? I had a similar question because I've, I've heard the same concerns um, as Councilman Rosenberg, and so I guess that's more of a a question for whoever is over this. Do we have somebody here with him that's over this board? Or I guess to, I will I will issue this statement to you is is that because somebody else has brought this up as well is is that maybe this is a board that needs to look at the time that it meets if it's having trouble meeting a quorum, or we as a body also need to talk at some point about boards and commissions and quorums like we have quorums for our committee, um, and because this was a relatively new appointment that she is. That we're flipping over is there is it a board issue or is it a, a, a more of a finding the right fit for the board um, I think we've we've talked about that a lot of times when we have boards that have frequent um, that have a frequent turnover so My understanding on this particular appointment is the constituent had an unexpected life-changing event and moved out of town so it was not something that we were expecting okay. but, but I will certainly pass the suggestion on the and I don't know if maybe that's something we need to talk about that would be more helpful in the future when we see like short turnovers. If we if we know that it's like somebody is, you know, I mean we don't need to know their entire life reason to to leave a board, but you know it is concerning. I think when we have boards that, not that this has had a lot of turnover in here, but just in general when we have short appointments and turnovers. Yeah. Any other questions by our committee members? I move for approval. Is there a second? <laughs> What does that mean? You're, you I know her. Yeah. I know her. She's great. So okay. that was just like a third. Okay. <laughs> third in favor? Uh, With the two fingers? Uh, well, I don't know. I, I kind of screwed up. I got that too. No, that, that's fine. Numbers are hard. Uh, no opposers? The ayes have it. We thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. At this time, we have four resolutions that we will address and they start with uh, honoring Miss Linda O'Neill on the occasion of her retirement from the Tennessee Commission on Children and Youth. Thank you, thank you. So move second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, the ayes have it. Okay, next we have resolution 2018-18. That's my seven Henderson. This is uh, honoring and congratulating the Franklin Road Academy wrestling team and their coach, Doug Newman. So moved. Oh, great. Thank you. They're so deserving. Thank you so much. Uh, next, <laughs> oh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. No opposers? The ayes have it. Thank you. Um, next, we have resolution 2018. 1219. This is uh, Ed Kendall, and we actually have a letter in his absence. And this is recognizing May 2018 as Lupus Awareness Month. Uh, do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposers? The ayes have it. Next, we have resolution 2018 1220, and that's uh, Withers and Van Reese recognizing Friday, June 1st to Saturday, June 30th, 2018 as the National, no, the Nashville Pride Month. Celebrate the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender communities and their enormous contributions to the quality of life in Nashville and Davidson County and further recognizing the 30th anniversary of the first Nashville Pride event, which took place in 1988. Um, so second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Did you want to say anything? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's all in the resolution. It's all in the resolution. <laughs> okay. Appreciate it. Like okay. Yeah. okay, thank you. Um, and that's him right there. Um, next, we have bills on second reading. It read the, okay, it's 2018-1181, uh, readopts the code of the Metro government prepared by the Municipal Code 
uh, Corporation, including supplemental and replacement pages thereof, <laughs> containing certain ordinances of a general and permanent nature enacted on or before January 29th, 2018. Do I have a motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposers? The ayes have it. Okay. Next, we have a late file. And this is by Council Leader at Large, Pretty Gilmore. And we have a resolution Here. requesting that Governor Bill has some veto HB 2315, which would prohibit state and local governmental entities from adopting sanctuary policies. Could we get an explanation? It's sure. a late file. Okay, definitely. Um, so <clears throat> I just want to say that right now the bill is in front of Gov Governor Haslam's desk, right? Mm -hmm. So if I would have waited any longer, it might have been June the 5th and it already been signed. Just as you know, he signed some bills this morning, the ones that related to our emissions policy. So that was signed. And so the, that's the reason I'm asking for the file not doing it recklessly. The second piece is that this does not create a sanctuary city. It just asks him to veto the bill. And um, what it does is, if this bill is to go through, it actually puts mandates on our city's resources as it relates to law enforcement that we cannot really fund. And so one thing I do think is good about this um, resolution is that um, Chief Anderson, who is in law enforcement, has also asked Governor Haslam not to support the bill that has been offered up by the state because we would be using our local resources for something that's normally done federally. And furthermore, it asks um, maybe uh, immigrants or non-documented persons, uh, they're afraid to participate. And I just, I'll just give a quick story. I have a student that goes to Fisk University, and I was talking to her. She's a very smart student. She's a medical student. And so when she and I was talking, you know, she says, now, if this bill goes in effect, my mother and father who go to work every day, they would have to leave this country, and I would be responsible for my sister and brother, and I'm mm -hmm. only 20 years old. So it also divides up families, and a lot of times when we think of immigrants, we try to criminalize it, but these are working uh, people, uh, people that go to universities and things of that nature. But, but, but beyond getting into that, it's just ask Governor Haslam not to, to veto this bill. And that's, that's all I ask, that no one, no matter what your personal standing is, just uh, tonight just not object uh, to the entering of the, the late resolution. Uh, Council Member Mendez is a co-sponsor, along with Council Member Betnay and uh, Council Member Scott Davis and myself. So I would just I ask that you're allowed to go for You would like to join as well. I would yeah, love I to have you sign. I don't need yes. to hop on, hop on that one, too. Yeah. OK. So, please yeah. sign it. Please, as many we people would like to. Any, uh, can I have a, we don't need a motion. We don't, uh, I think the, yeah. we're just, well, all we're doing in here is determining if there's a reason for the late and that would be the reason. And, and you've got to. It's time a, sensitive. It's time sensitive. Right. So. Okay. Okay. Understand. Okay. Now, so I'm all in favor. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And next, we have amendment to ordinance number BL 2018-1172. Delete all references to Nashville Convention, <laughs> Nashville Convention and Business Bureau. Uh, therein and substituting in lieu thereof National Convention and Visitors Corporation. We have a late file amendment. Do we have a motion to? Oh, okay. Who's, who's this? Th that's Sharon Hurt. Um, Sharon Hurt. It looks like just, and, clear, just changing one word. Just, that, uh -huh. the, it says the, by yeah. amending one, by deleting all references to National Convention and Visitors Bureau therein and substituting in lieu. It's just a change. In Why do we need it? It's a word correction. Are the words wrong? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it always? How long has it been wrong? <laughs> they changed the name in the last couple of years. The code still refers okay. to the Convention and Visitors Bureau. It's now the Convention and Visitors Corporation. Oh. Okay. I didn't even know that. Was you know, I acted like that was a dumb question. <coughs> this is, it's an amendment to a bill that's up on second, second, reading. second reading or third reading? Okay. Second. Second. So it's just an amendment to fix something. It's a late filed amendment onto a bill that's pending. Okay. Okay. All in favor? To the amendment, do we have a motion? To move motion. To the Second. Oh, wait, are we voting? Wait, it's in a late file. Okay. Okay. It's an amendment. We're not voting. Right. Okay. So we accept. Okay. And um, I know I had the Okay. One last thing, uh, Dr. Jameson. With the standing committees, this third, the coach, no, 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 no. 
It's the Parks, Library, and Arts, and we've already voted on that. So what do we need to do in here for that? So at the previous Rules Committee, you voted to approve it, but it was uh, Parks, Library, Arts, and Recreation, and the preference from those who had suggested it would it's be... Parks, Library, and Arts. Period. Correct. Okay. Are we going to change it every meeting? Because <laughs> we already did. Uh, we could add a comment. Does nobody <laughs> Thank you. We should. What about recreation? Okay, so we... We good with that? Yes. yes. Everybody, everybody good? Okay, uh, Councilor DeVircha, do you have something that I don't have? I do. <laughs> I have a, a, a late file. Um, it's a resolution um, requesting that the Metropolitan Civil Service Commission propose a pay plan for metropolitan government employees limited to the ensuing fiscal year 2018-19 fiscal year and requesting the mayor Director of Finance and Civil Service Commission to refrain from multi-year pay plans in the future unless a financing plan is presented adequately demonstrating that future revenues will be sufficient to meet the obligation. And I believe that caption alone speaks for um, the intent of, of the resolution. I thought that was the resolution. That was just the caption. <laughs> so what happens in the case, I don't have that here, right? Yeah. It's late file. It's late late file. file. Yeah. Well, you if there's a late file, I have it. You don't have it in your packet? No, it's like in the substitute packet. Here it is. Oh. So, Madam Chair, it showed up in the Budget Committee yesterday. It did. Uh, it was approved in the Budget Committee. Uh, the reason for the, my understanding for the late filing is that there's a Civil Service Commission meeting that's coming up at the end of this month. And they may take some action, so this simply is trying to get us on record to say uh, no more multi-year plans. I guess what I'm asking for clarification, now this is the budget committee? That's committee? the budget committee. Okay, yeah. so I don't have it in the rules. Yeah, it doesn't no, look I, like I don't have it. I don't have it, so I don't want to say something and be out of order and be corrected on the floor, so do I say something or not? So I think what the okay. chair is simply doing is, is because it's late filed, she had to come in here okay. and request. We're not voting that. on it in here. Okay. Yeah, We're just simply understanding say. the reason okay. why it's late okay. filed. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. Okie dokie. So we okay with Okay. Uh, any further business? Any new business? I have one okay. last okay. thing. Okay. You're going to hate me for this. Um, I'm just, I can't um, imagine me hating anyone. Well, I know. I know. I you're, really you're can't. So nice. um, but... I'm trying to understand something with the Metro Board of Equalization. Okay. I'm trying to understand, uh, basically, because we've been through budget hearings, what okay. happened, and they all go off. They all apparently went off on April the whatever that April of was. 2018. They all are gone, and then we, re I guess we, at some point, okay. appoint brand new folks. Mm -hmm. But we're st I'm still trying to figure out a little bit about all the stuff that happened with the. Um, with their assessments and then the decreases in some of the property values. And I wasn't sure where to bring it up, but we're the ones who picked them or you know, oh. we're the ones that sent them through. So I thought it, maybe it might be helpful for us to talk to the chairman, the old chairman of the committee. I don't know if that's appropriate or not, but it's our responsibility to kind of figure out what happened. And I'm still not sure if I fully understand the difference between what happened with the informal assessment and the Metro Board of Equalization and what happened in this situation, and I would like to know. Where's so I'm just money? asking you. I said, okay. where's our money? <laughs> I didn't say it line. that way. I just, uh, yeah, yeah. I I just would like to know. I'd like to talk to someone, and okay. maybe it's appropriate more in budget, but, so what, but uh, it was here, and I thought maybe Mike, I should So ask. what would you say in response to his comment? Uh, an invitation to the chairman to appear either at this committee or at budget? Should well, we I think that's a great suggestion because we are the one yeah. approving the body. Right. So before they go out, could you yeah. come uh, prepare the report, how many property you have seen, how many accepted, and what's the, you know, uh, dollar amount and so forth, and mm -hmm. kind of explain what had happened this cycle. Because we that expanded be that board idea. this past time, didn't yes, we? we? Like, add six to that board? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 I remember that part. And I think, again, I'm, what I'm trying to do is understand. So people come through here, and I know that we ask lots of questions, right. and, right. and you know, and we appreciate so much that people are willing to serve. But something happened here, and it had right. some serious consequences. And the question is, what happened? And are, and are there some things, particularly with the appointments of those of those folks serving, 
that we need to be more careful of if that's what happened, and I yeah. just don't know. Well, when that's what equalization. Sure. Okay. Um, Recognize. So I've uh, um, just on my own mm -hmm. looked into that, and oh. I mean my, and, and so I mean I think budget finance is probably the right place, but if we're getting appointments through here, then we become the right place. Right. I mean my. Uh, I mean, my working theory is that the whole process worked very much like it's worked in the past, and especially the part with uh, Vivian Wilhoit's office happened exactly the way it's always happened before, and that her office did what they were supposed to do. The reason, I think, why the the appeals are more pronounced this year is because we did not have in tandem with that the customary rate increase after the reassessment. Usually the reassessment is by state law requires us to be uh, revenue neutral and then there's always coupled with that a, a, another change in the rate to increase revenue. The decision was made last year to only do one of those two pieces which has made the impact of the appeals which as far as I can tell are fairly ordinary, fairly ordinary in scope, um, fairly ordinary results of the appeals. They've just stood out more because we didn't have a rate change that went up with it. You know, that's my personal conclusion. I mean, that doesn't, I mean, we, I know a lot of people in the community have got questions about it. And so whether it's this committee or budget and finance, I, I think these things are, are worth asking. Uh, but, you know, my feedback is the appeal process went pretty much the way appeal processes go when you have a reassessment. It does happen to be commercial properties that, um, that are bigger, they can afford to hire lawyers to run through the process, and and so being lopsided toward commercial properties, you know, my information is that it's all fairly typical, but it's a, it's more um, noticeable because we didn't have a rate tweak for more yeah. revenue to go along with it. Yeah, but that's true. That's just all my well, personal. I, think I mean, I think that sounds about what a lot of us have collected, but I do think maybe if we could, because we are re if we are reappointing a lot just to make sure that yeah. we we make sh we run we run down every track. Okay, you can check into it. So uh, if it's okay, what I'll do is work with Mr. James and we'll figure That's out if we right. want to send um, but the chairman, chair lady of the budget committee is here. We'll see if we want to actually do that. Uh, and part of it is the, the responsibility of making sure that we right, that we fully on. understand. <laughs> yeah. That's, I think yes. that's part of it. Okay, yeah. thank you so much for that. Any other new business? No sure. further discussion? Okay, well then, we stand adjourned. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Awesome. You want that? See, no. Hey, I got you. You want that?